What's up, race fans? The Gorilla from the Trans Am Racing Series presented by Pirelli. A big thank you to Three Dimensional Services Group from nearby Rochester Hills right here in Michigan. We want to thank them for being a huge part of this amazing race that's going on here this weekend. But I've got one of the biggest legends of hockey with me, none other than Darren McCarty, and he is going to give the biggest and most important command ever heard in the world of racing. Darren, it's all you. Drivers, start your engines! And there we have it. We are underway at Belle Isle. And the engines will be roaring into action very soon indeed. And we're going to go out on what will be a very big reconnaissance, reconnaissance lap for these guys because this is the first time out on the circuit today. They've been drenched in water for the last two hours. But as you can see, conditions much better than I just described as we get ready for the second of two races the Muscle Car Challenge yesterday, and the Motor City Dash coming your way. A hundred miles of pure muscle car noise and racing. Jake, uh, what have you got as an update? We're gonna get it. We're gonna get the single file start. Do you think? We are. We're gonna get one pace lap and one single file start. And uh, we actually just got word that the number 26 left pre-grid a little early with trouble firing. Um, I think he he did come back. So. Good news there for Roger. Tom, how quickly does this dry, track dry out? I think when you get the, this many cars with this wide of tires, it's going to dry out fairly quickly. As long as we don't have a, another bit of rain come down, I think uh, these guys will see pretty quickly the dry lines. And uh, you just hope that you don't get off into that area that maybe somebody hasn't uh, really dried the track up yet. But as you said, a lot of dryers, a lot of brooms were out there. The Indy cars were out there before. And now what we're going to see are these Trans Am cars presented by Pirelli. Well, this is a tough enough track. Talking to the drivers last night, this is a tough enough track at, at its finest, and it's bumpy. Uh, you have a lot of distractions that you've got to avoid. You've got the Indy markers, which are almost off-putting, because their brake markers are nothing to do with how Trans Am go about braking. Uh, and so certainly some of the guys coming here for the first time were really kind of bamboozled a little bit by what it was all about. But um, I think <laughs> now we throw in a little bit of wet weather, it's going to make things even harder. Remember, everybody's got pretty much close to five 500 horsepower under the hood, and it's almost a spec series, Nigel. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of price caps on these, uh, and this it's really what makes Trans Am so cool. It's it's an affordable series when you look at auto racing as a whole. Um, they have a, a cap on shocks, exhaust, um, so it it makes it the most competitive class in Trans Am. Got to think that Chevrolet, who of course is sponsoring the overall event, have got to be happy to see. Their car's out in action, and Trans Am alive and kicking, and actually now going into a brand new era in many ways with young drivers coming up. It's great to see Ernie Francis Jr., for example, out there today trying out TA2 for the first time. Yeah, and Gar hopping back in. Yes. He's got to come defend his title, right? I mean, he was last year's winner, um, and he came close yesterday with, yeah. with the second place, and so I, I think he had the fastest lap, so he qualified on the pole. Um, and I think he's itching to, to redeem himself a little bit. And Tom, I'm sure it's been the way for so many years, which is a great opportunity for youngsters coming out of karting or, you know, or, or even uh, modified racing to come into this as a youngster and get going. But there's also the likes of, you know, Buffamonte, who've been doing it for many years. Uh, you know, we've got Rafa Matos, who's come a different route uh, via Indy, um, but loving every minute of it. So it, it really encourages uh, guys from all walks of racing to come into it. Absolutely, and uh, you take a look at some of the winners that have been here. I mentioned Tom Gloy earlier, Elliot Forbes Robinson, Wally Dollenbach, Scott Pruitt, who developed into one of the greatest uh, road races of all time, Hurley Haywood, Greg Pickett, Scott Sharp, Tommy Archer, Dorsey Schrader, Ron Fellows, Tommy Kendall, Paul Genalozzi, Brian Simo, and then uh, you've got somebody like Ernie Francis Jr., who last year won the TA class here and is uh, moving up and trying the TA2 here this weekend. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out. Prototype, production, proven. The three-dimensional services group, 
Experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The Three Dimensional Services Group. So we're about to go right to the pace car lights. We'll go off and they have at turn 11. And we're ready to go racing here. And it's gonna be a key start now for the leaders in this one. As Robinson starts to accelerate, Rafa Matos right there with him. Sadly, Mark Miller not taking part in the Ford Mustang this weekend. After crashing in his qualifying session, Robinson leads them through from Bufamante. Project got a good start, Bups up there as well. Francis Junior in fifth place as we file down. Yeah, Rui Francis Junior in that 44 car made a move there on the start. So he is tucked back in there into the fourth position right behind Tony Bufamante. Shout out for Tom Sheehan, his team working overnight last night. They uh, got turned around by another car in the previous race yesterday. They had a lot of work to do on the rear end of the car, but they worked all night and they've got it going. And Tom Sheehan up in seventh place ahead of Shane Lewis, who also got in the wars. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Let's set those race down. And everybody kind of a little tentative right now, but already Rafa Matos starting to make a move. And Rafa Matos, of course, two wins under his belt. His first win coming this year at Road Atlanta, the first ever in Trans Am. And the former Indy guy is on it and wants to impress his old mates. Here we are, side by side. Did not have the preferred inside line. That went to Gar Robinson, who has the lead from the pole. They've uh, put a little bit of distance between themselves and Tony Bufamante right now. but. Right now, good start for all these Trans Am cars as we work to complete the first lap. Yeah, I think Bufamonte is just uh, playing a waiting game in the number 34 in third place. He knows that Rafa is pretty aggressive when it comes to racing. Gar Robinson wouldn't be holding back too, and uh, Bufamonte was reminded of that yesterday. And I think he's just going to let these two dice for a couple of seconds and, and just let things settle down. Good start once again from uh, Bupp. Jordan Bupp, who uh, really enjoyed yesterday, he said he really was looking forward to racing if it did rain. Uh, he loves racing in the rain. And his father, Kenny, uh, also saw him this morning. But uh, Bupp really enjoying his time here in Trans Am. Yeah, I think there's a little urgency on Rafa because it, you, him and Tony Bufamonte are going for the championships. Yes. And, and I, I think he would really <laughs> rather have Gar between them uh, yeah, look, as, as he's going for it right now. Yeah, Bufamonte comes side by side with Matos. Can't boil it off, and Matos, the Brazilian, does a good job of defending in the 88. Yeah, Gar Robinson is here to defend it. Particularly his team's based in Michigan, uh, even though he's from Texas. Uh, and he'll be here and maybe going to India, I think, as well, but he's not uh, going to do the whole season, as you quite rightly point out. Matos and Bufamonte are challenging for the overall championship. Bufamonte uh, yesterday really helped himself, and with the pole position, of course, uh, getting up there. And so uh, now he's very much, he, he was second in the championship, but he had a, 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 a big points deficit. And now with this doubleheader, Bufamonte can put himself right back into the driving seat as they head to India in a couple of weeks. Look at how big a gap the front five yeah. have put on the number six position. That's uh, Keith Prochuk out of Chicago. That car just coming into view right there. And there is a little gap now between Rafa Matos and Bufamonte there. The distance between second and third. Francis Jr. looks as though he's made a mistake. Dropped down to ninth position after what was a sterling start. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, yesterday, in the, in the race yesterday, he had a uh, a uh, clutch problem. Yes, I he did. Yeah. So I, I hope it's not uh, the same type of problem. So good start to this one. 100 mile race. This is the Motor City Dash, and we've got one on. The conditions now improving as they fly past our commentary position. Robinson leads from Matos. Francis Jr. actually has been registered as third, but I don't think that's the case because Bufamonte is in my picture in third place very much so. Yeah, we're just getting word that there's there's no data on uh, Rafa's car. He's having issues with his transponder, so ah, that, that okay. could be a little bit of a problem. Well, you can see what we can see, and it's fairly obvious we've got a great three-way, five-way battle, quite rightly, Tom. And these guys are really pulling away, so we're, we're starting to see the metal and uh, skill of these drivers in these conditions because we've got a distinct five-way battle at the front, and it's way ahead of everybody else. Well, the weekend didn't start off real well for Rafa Matos because he had trouble just getting here from his Florida home because of weather conditions. Yesterday winds up driving most of the race in third place, moving up to second place there with the problems for Gar Robinson. 
But right now, he is right on the rear bumper of that Chevy Camaro of Gar Robinson as they head down into turn seven and uh, getting right up there in it once again. That's Tony Bufamonte. Not much distance between he and Rafa Matos now. Yeah, and a real character, Gar Robinson. I talked to him yesterday. I said, are you a little bit race rusty? He's been doing the uh, Pirelli uh, challenge. He's been doing GT4. And I said, are you a bit of Trans Am race rusty? He said, oh, no, it's like race. It's like riding a bike, which which is interesting when you've got 500 horsepower under the hood. I, I've never ridden a bike that was anywhere like that, but <laughs> he seemed to, he seemed to, and he did show in qualifying. He was, what, a thousandth of a second off pole? Yeah, and that's, and that's seat time. I mean, anytime you can get in a race car and keep yourself sharp, um, that's key. So for him, uh, he's, he, I've seen him have more fun oh, this weekend than anything. Rafa's making a move, and he's done it. Well, he just got warned for blocking, and he decided, well, forget it. I'll just uh, I'll just go into the lead, and uh, that's what I'll do. So Rafa Matos, uh, the 88 Brazilian, leading the way. The man who leads the championship. He's got two wins under his belt, looking for a third here. Got a second place yesterday, thanks to Gar. Robinson spinning on the last lap with corners to go. And Robinson not giving up early. He gets a side swipe there a little bit, but gets the power down early. And Buffamonte in a holding mode in that Mustang, just in third place. Good start, good racing. But Matos, where he wants to be as he goes to five. Well, it was a five-car battle there. Now it is a four-car battle. Matos, Gar Robinson, Tony Buffamonte, Ernie Francis Jr. This kid looks like your paper boy, but right here, <laughs> He is, he is young, and his first week into driving in this TA2 cars. Yeah, if you saw him sitting having lunch, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be too intimidated by him at all. You wouldn't think he was necessarily a racing driver. He's, he's a, little, a little guy, but I tell you what, put him in a, behind a race car. That guy is merciless, and his record speaks for itself. He's won everything he's done, TA4, TA, he's, been, he's still in the TA championship. He's doing a bit of NASCAR as well, uh, and he's here doing his first TA2. And I think this could be very much a future for the youngster, and he really has made a name for himself. And that's what I love about Trans Am. It's welcoming the youngsters and the, the, you know, the more experienced veterans who've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. Yeah, that's a great thing about having this series, the way it is, the setup, the rules, and everything. You can have a rookie come in and run just as quick as a five- or ten-year veteran, so it really evens out the playing field. And, and uh, Ernie's been doing a remarkable job this weekend in that TA2 car. And just to get you up to speed, we've been to Sebring, we've been to Road Atlanta, we've been to Homestead in Florida, and our first outing here in Detroit. And in a couple of weeks, we head to Indianapolis. So it's a long season of 12 rounds, which rounds up in Daytona at the end of the season in November. So a long way to go yet, and a lot of racing to come from this series. Sheehan doing a really good job. Even though there's a big gap between this uh, group we're watching in the top four, he's up to sixth place ahead of Napoleon. Honeywell, the rookie in the eighth position, then Robertson, Van Terry, uh, rounds out the top ten. Prochuk is the man I'm looking at, down in 14th position. I don't know what happened to Keith there, but he's down in 14th position. Hopefully he'll try to get up the board as the race goes on. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out. Prototype. Production. Proven. The three-dimensional services group. Experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The three-dimensional services group. We move back on the big screens and take a look at this lead battle, which uh, has broken off a little bit. They have gapped themselves at the very front of the field. Rafa Matos, who uh, took the lead just a couple of laps ago. We look back to Tony Buffamonte, yesterday's winner, and he's just kind of sitting there in the catbird seat. Also breaking off a little bit there is the number four position of Ernie Francis Jr. Yeah, I think uh, as soon as Matos got in front of Gar, he's trying to get as far away from Buffamonte as he possibly can. Well, still a long way to go in this, and it's going to be interesting to see how Buffamonte plays this. He was so happy yesterday. Talked to him in the press conference, and uh, he had a, what I would call a big moment where we got to see all his sponsors on the side of the car because they were coming right at us. 
Uh, he got sideways out of two of the corners, and I said, uh, how did you get yourself out of that? He said, I closed my eyes and kept my foot in. He said, because I thought I was going to hit the wall on a couple of occasions because Gar was pushing him so hard, and he thought he'd lost it, but uh, he managed to hold it all together, uh, and that was an important, important win, or an important... Uh, gain of points for Buffamonte yesterday to keep him very much in the hunt. Mark Miller sadly turning to Ford Mustang power in qualifying but uh, getting involved in a qualifying crash and of course Mark Miller the winner at Sebring not able in fact the only real Michigan native from Holland uh, here this weekend but sadly not racing today but he was one of the contenders but I think with this double header and not scoring any points uh, it's going to put him way down the field. And right now, taking a look at that 87 car, Doug Peterson out of Florida. Man, you want to talk about a veteran in this yeah. series. Doug Peterson certainly fits that description. Well, Doug had a problem yesterday. He got turned around by another car that was damaged to the rear and to the right front suspension, but they got it all fixed up. And yeah, he just found himself out of sorts and uh, kind of knocked around yesterday, but they've got it all together. He, of course, Rafa Matos, his teammate and team owner, I believe. And back we go to the front of the field. There was Rafa Matos momentarily, and he's getting ready to come up on one of the slower cars here. So Rafa Matos working at lap number eight. We are scheduled to go 36 more laps before we go the hour and 15 minute time. Left. And right now, here is lap traffic giveth and taketh away right now, and Rafa Matos having to get around some of the slower traffic. I was going to say, Rafa, depending on the track staff here to put out the flags and let the slower cars know, but he was right up the tail end of that uh, back marker, and I thought a little, a little risky for myself, Jake. Uh, I mean, the conditions now, though, are dry pretty much. You can see a few wet patches out there, but grip-wise, they're up to speed, up to temperature, and they're going good. Yeah, and I don't think he wanted to mess, you know, mess yeah. around and get, you know, <laughs> let Gar get any closer than he already is. So, I, you know, good on the back marker to get out of the way and be, you know, heads up on that for sure. And a little bit of history today. The first time the TA2s have been on their own here at Belle Isle, and that's great for them. And it's great to see the likes of Ernie Francis jumping out of TA and coming to TA2 uh, to take on Belle Isle. But he said it was just an opportunity. You just couldn't give up. I mean, here we are in the Motor City. These fantastic cars, which have got such a history here, and were literally built down the road. And, uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. I mean, um, every driver worth his salt wants to be here at Belle Isle. The battle you're watching right now, that is uh, Matt Parent in the number 14 car. He's in 13th position trying to overtake Anthony Howell, or Honeywell, excuse me, in the 76 car. And those two cars, not all that fine, far behind Keith Prochuk, who has fallen all the way back from his fine starting position down to 11th place. It's interesting talking to Rafa. We got a feature on our show coming up on the television about Rafa. And Rafa talks about how growing up in Brazil, everybody's very much aware of Trans Am. And he really liked the idea of racing these cars, even when he was a kid. He's still karting to this day. Every kid, it seems, starts off with a karting. And he still, and that's a bit of a lockup by the 91, big time. That's Napoleon, who got in trouble yesterday, and they had to drag his car out of the way. But yeah, Rafa was saying that he loves racing the Trans Am cars, and he's done uh, pretty much every kind of car, but uh, was well known, was a rookie uh, Indy Lights uh, champion, uh, an Indy Lights champion and a, and a rookie champion in Indy, and uh, certainly very famous for racing around the Belle Isle circuit. So this is just uh, a home from home for him. Yeah, Rafa Matos was back in the uh, old Atlantic series yep. back in the 2007 and uh, really got, a, got caught up in the whole situation with the combining of the old uh, Champ Car series and the old IRL and there just weren't a whole lot of seats that were available. He eventually did find some uh, seat time in the uh, new IndyCar series, but that really didn't last all that long for him. He has found himself a home here in Trans Am, to be sure. Take a wonder at this point. You know, you got, you're got you looking at the clock, 57 minutes. What is your engineer saying? I mean, the, the race has settled down. It's spread out. Everybody's looking for where they are and how hard they can push. Conditions really now are pushable, I should say. I mean, there's definitely a dry line out there, but uh, there's still a long way to go in this race. Yeah, and I, it's all going to come down to tire management. And, and if it's... If it stays cool, you can run a little bit harder, I would think. But I think Rafa, um, 
is doing a little bit Whoa. of both. Oh, got a car on the wall there. Number 49, Ethan Wilson. Rookie yeah, that's this one year. of the rookies. Yeah, that's one of Mark Miller's uh, boys. And he had a good run yesterday, but uh, sadly, he has buried himself in the tie wall right there. Had a good run going in this one. He was sitting there in sixth place just behind Jordan Bupp. Not sure what happened. He might have locked him up there. I'm sure we'll get a replay of it. Yesterday, Ethan Wilson in from Santa, uh, Santa Clara, California, in the Dodge Challenger, burying it, sadly, into the wall after a sixth place yesterday. Well, he's able to go get it again. out. Good boy. There you go. Looks like there's some damage on the left side of the car. Here's, Here's the replay look. on it. He looked as though he turned in fine. He just, yeah, just right down the road. <laughs> So there is heavy damage. damage to the left front of that car. So you can imagine if it does that kind of damage going into the tire wall, what it would be if you were just going into bare concrete right there. So uh, a lot of rub underneath there as he yeah. brings the car on around damage I think that's to the hood. The, yeah, I got to say, I think the main down, that's why he's trying to sort of scuttle his way back to the pits quickly, because to me it looks like just, but it doesn't look as though he's done the suspension any harm. I think it's merely just uh, bodywork rubbing on the tire at the moment. We'll soon find out. Whoa, well, well yeah. there's the bodywork gone. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we expected him to come into the pits, I think, there, and he just came down the front straight away and carried on. Yep. I don't know if the official will be too pleased with that, given that he's just thrown half his car onto the main straight, but never mind. He's still going, and as you can see, the suspension is fine because he's turning fine, he's Ethan Wilson, but uh, a lot of damage to the front, and they're still not going to be able to go uh, fast when uh, that bodywork is literally clinging to the ground. Back to the leaders, though, and now traffic is the instance, Jake. We've got a real problem now for Matos. He's got to be patient now, and he's not known for his patience. Not no. many Brazilians are. <laughs> no, but, no. Um, he, he really needs to be careful because there's not a lot of room for overtake. And there is a big, let's face it, a big uh, gap between those guys at the front and how fast they're going uh, and the guys at the back who are going as fast as they can uh, may not necessarily know where to be on the track. We saw that in qualifying. Right. And I think, uh, I think he's going to have to be patient and aggressive at the same time. Yep. Because, uh, you know, you want to be smart about this and you want to set him up in the right spot, but you don't want to rush it and get yourself in any trouble. Even... Even if you have to check up just a little bit, you know, Gar's coming and Gar's coming quick. So the closing rate is going to be pretty big here. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. And the problem for the guys who are bat markers right now is that they don't want to go offline. They don't want to go onto the wet part of the circuit and risk uh, slipping themselves. Uh, yeah, they'll try to get out. They'll see the flags. But <laughs> I'd be the last to go straight onto a, a really nasty, sticky, wet patch right now uh, if, uh, if the leaders were coming through. But now we're going to witness it firsthand. Here we go. Well, that was easy. Yeah, I think uh, the number 26 gave him a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Open the room, let off a little early. All good work. Now, yeah. I got Robinson not making it as easy, though. And, uh, yep, uh, Roos getting out of the way for, for Gar Robinson. And now the question is, with the gap of, what, two seconds a moment ago or a last lap, let's see how Robinson can react. His last lap at 136.7 was identical to Matos, but this traffic could play its role, and Buffamonte likewise. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out. Prototype. Production. Proven. The three-dimensional services group. Experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The three-dimensional services group. You don't want to hit that either. That could no. easily cause a puncher. They do have the uh, the red and yellow flag right here before that on the main straightaway here to make sure everybody knows. Eventually, I think they'll pull that. As a matter of fact, they did just as I said that. So everybody hopefully has seen it and will not uh, make that part of the race course. Stephen Lustig, who was in the top 10 yesterday. In fact, he finished 10th overall. Man from New Jersey, uh, all the way down at the moment anyway, in 16th place with Roger Roos with him. And Ethan Wilson just dropped down now to 15th place. Uh, and watching out also for Buffamonte. He was in his own battle uh, from third place, just going through the back mark. As I say battle, he was just trying to get through traffic. Ernie Francis Jr. still fourth. Jordan Butt fifth. Shane Lewis, great story from Shane. Shane Lewis forgot his credentials yesterday. So he got to the gate and they said, ah, uh -uh, you can't come in here. He said, but I'm racing. He said, uh-huh. 
He said, no, 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 I'm racing. Sure you are. And they said, sure you are. And they said, no, I got to get in. I got I a race to get to. They said, OK, well, you need a ticket. So off he went, bought his general admission ticket, got himself inside, put on the overalls, ran like hell, and got down and got in the car. So I don't know if you get a refund for that, but that's paying for your own entertainment, I think. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> he's, he's really paying to be here at that point. I think the policy is if you finish in the top three, you get the refund. Yeah, that's it. I think so, too. Anyway, that's the story of Shane Lewis, who's got a great history of racing in Trans Am. He's always around the top five uh, in any one race. But uh, he struggled a little bit this weekend, as a few guys have. I mentioned Mark Miller already. And uh, Ernie right on the back of Tony Bufamonte, and I believe that's for third. Yeah, Ernie actually has got his tail up. I've been keeping a watchful eye on Ernie, who, you know, I, 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 my first question to him is when I got his, how different is going to be a TA versus a TA2? And he goes, you know what? Honestly, it's, it, yeah, oh, no. that, that, there's that potential caution. Well, not if he gets it fired up. That could just be a local caution. Uh, he looks like Bobby, no, I think, Bobby no, he's, no, 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 that's going to be a caution. He's taking some... Uh, He's taking some track with him. Big hit. And who are we looking at? I believe that's Bobby Roos. I couldn't see the number on that one. Well, Bobby Roos drives the number 26. Sorry, Roger Roos drives the number 26. Well, we'll keep an eye out, at, but it could well change the dynamic of this race as both Buffamonte and Ernie Francis Jr. continue their flight. And this is Youth against experience for sure. Buffamonte against Ernie Francis Jr. And I know that Ernie will really go home on a Sunday night if he can beat Tony and go, right, I'm in this. Uh, I want to be part of this because I was asking him if he could stick around TA2. And he's, of course, got the TA championship to win. He's leading that. Um, but uh, I think he'd like this scalp, wouldn't he? Absolutely. I, I think uh, he's having more fun. In the, yeah, there it is. I don't think... Uh full course caution there. I don't think they, he was right in the way of that exit. Man, there is it heavy is race, damage. Yeah. Heavy damage to that car. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out. Prototype. Production. Proven. The three-dimensional services group. Experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The Three Dimensional Services Group. The way they're running right now and the way they ran yesterday, I think it's going to be close. I mean, it's going to be really close. And I think the double points are actually, actually going to help some of the other guys that aren't Bufamonte and Matos. Because, you know, if Mato wins today, that points difference is only going to be about 10 or 15 points so um, that's one race but I think it'll really help guys like like Shane Lewis and, and those guys that are that are really just on the fringe of being in the championship hunt yeah it's gonna be close uh, 30 points for a win 27 25 and down on through and bonus points for uh, one point leading the lap etc so there's plenty of chances and Buffamonte took one and getting the pole position already and uh, yeah it, there's a lot of opportunity to make hay here, and uh, conditions have not been easy. I mentioned the, the drizzle we got in qualifying, and I think that put a few people off. We had a curtailed qualifying session to start the weekend off, and obviously this is a busy, busy weekend here in Detroit. You've got the Indy cars on a doubleheader themselves. We've got IMSA here as well, so uh, it's, it's all happening. It's putting some good rubber down, but unfortunately the rain's kind of pushing that away. <laughs> And as I understand it, uh, the different rubber from the different cars, they're not the same uh, manufacturers for the rubber. And sometimes that can make slick, uh, slick going for the people who follow you because the rubber doesn't necessarily necessarily meet up, I guess you could right. say. Right. It, it can actually make it slicker. Mm -hmm. So um, I know... Uh, I talked to Shane and I talked to uh, Gar as well. They were they were both. There's parts on the track that are definitely slicker, and parts on the track that you have a bunch more grip. So it's just uh, I think one of the tricks is finding where you can get the most grip and working on that corner and kind of sacrificing the other ones. Well, I have a feeling we're going to see Gar Robinson make a big move here when we come back to Green Flag Racing as the 87 car once again. Doug yeah, Peterson in. Yeah, and I think that's for uh, passing under yellow. Or well, somebody passing him under yellow. Or, or is there a problem to that car? I'm, I'm thinking this is a penalty, but. Uh, yeah, they're looking all around the machine. 
Uh, I think it's the number 77 that was being reviewed right, okay. for passing the 87. Uh, okay. Um, doors coming off. That is not good. Yeah, that doesn't look as though he's going anywhere. Doug Peterson, who I mentioned before, had an off yesterday. Obviously, he's got some damage because, oh, well, just maybe they're checking the tires, but that mechanic there is not just checking well, the tires. helmet's coming off. Yeah, he's out. So, the Lear sponsored car is out. The rather battered Ethan Wilson's car there in the orange and white with the left side still somewhere floating around the track. It'll be a memento for somebody, I'm sure, by the end of the day. But we're under caution here as Doug Peterson out of the car. And he'll be able to watch on the sidelines as Rafa goes for glory. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out. Prototype. Production. Proven. The three-dimensional services group. Experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The Three Dimensional Services Group. The Corvette peels off. Rafa in the 88, the yellow and black. He holds them all up. Buffamonte looking for a restart. Here we go. Uh, Gar didn't let him get too far away. Good stuff by Gar Robinson. He's he got looks a run to the on outside. Him. He's got a good run on him. Buffamonte's got a better run, but he's on looking on Ethan Wilson, who isn't running full speed anyway. And through he goes. So no traffic problems for him. Big, big traffic in the midfield there. But Rafa leads this way from Gar. Oh, wall. big smash at the back. And it's the 76 of Honeywell. Well, the Honey Badger just got Honey Badgered. Yeah, that, uh, that almost looked like he got turned. Yeah, I think he did. And that's one of the rookies here, but uh, experienced driver, but a rookie two Trans Am. Uh, but that's a nasty incident, and that's not going to help Rafa's chances because I'm sure that's only going to bring out the caution again, which it does. And they're going to have to do it all again. But uh, exciting, dramatic racing, as we expect from Belle Isle. And, Tom, I'm sure you could probably put us about uh, into about 20 years of... Uh, Similar incidents here at Belmont. Well, I tell you what, you're coming down off of the front straightaway into that right-hand turn, which is turn one. It is really narrow there as you come through between one and two, and it widens out. And we saw him. Oof. Oh, you're looking back up at that car. It, uh, it, uh, been pretty well used up, as they say. And uh, so we'll wait to see. It's going to take a while to get the course cleared off because there is debris over much of that course but uh, they had really just gotten well here's the replay on it so everybody in the lead pack goes through cleanly now look to your right hand side yeah I think oh, he basically oh. caused it himself I yeah, mean he looked, came across and I'm not sure he had plenty weird. of time to get back over to the left side of the racetrack I'm not sure what made him so urgent he just came right over the top of him and as you can see with the damage on that car, that's one of the places you really don't expect to hit the wall so they don't have the tire barriers out there. So you're going to hit full impact, yeah. Yep. So well, you can see from how the, the car's literally scattered across the track. And the car, drivers have got to be careful here because the last thing you want to do is drive over a piece of, like just Rafa just did, but you don't want to drive. He drove over the middle of it purposely, but look how he trailed it there. That could be not a good sign because you only need to uh, get a slight puncher and that, or even a worse than that, a slow deflating puncher, which will catch you out uh, when you think the tire's fine. As you turn in, suddenly you're, you're in a real mess. Yeah, I don't think... I think they'd like to see that cleaned up as soon as possible, especially, you know, get a broom out there pretty quick because that that can be devastating for, for Rafa if, you know, you lead the race and get caught with a flat tire. Once again, watching here on the replay, and it looks like he was coming back across yeah. the track once again yeah. and uh, wasn't aware of the car off to his left-hand rear side, got turned around and whap into the wall. Well, the good thing about Belle Isle is these guys who are doing the clearing up are some of the most experienced in the game. They love coming here to Belle Isle, and we've had so many different incidents in different formats of racing. And these guys are as quick as can be at clearing up the Belle Isle circuit because they know <laughs> that we ain't going racing until it's done. So, uh, yeah, they're getting pretty quick at doing it. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. 
In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out. Prototype, production, proven. The three-dimensional services group, experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The three-dimensional services group. And the lights off on the car, this time on the Corvette. And now Rafa has got to wind himself up. Gar Robinson sticking himself right underneath the 88. And Buffamonte in the Mustang, and the all-blue Mustang in third position. Watch out for Ernie Francis Jr. as well. Here we go, folks. Now oh, Rafa got a pretty good restart there. Buffamonte got away well, and Bub got away well too. He's all over the back of Francis Jr. at the moment. But a good clean restart as we go into turn two. 26 minutes to go as the green flags wave. Rafa Matos of Brazil, the championship leader, leads the way from Gar Robinson, last year's winner here at Belle Isle. And Buffamonte trying to hold off the youngster, Ernie Francis Jr., making his debut this weekend in TA2. It looked like Gar Robinson was trying to make that move or looking to make that move, coming down into one of the best passing spots, but was not able to do it. Now they work up through four up through five and then they'll be making the uh, right hand turn on the long back straightaway. He's got a big kick in it back there but the strand fastest part of this race course. Yeah and if you notice that so we were talking to Mark Miller yesterday um, you notice as they come off of the straightaways how they sort of fan out. Yep. He was telling us that, that that's for aero and clean air. That's not necessarily they're just fanning out or trying to pass. Um, it, you know it's really important for aero for them. Yeah, and it's interesting as we look at the course, certain parts of the course, as we come down the closing stages of this, and there's a possible overtake on, you've got to be oh so careful. This is completely dry through this section you're looking at here, and you can see it brilliantly from overhead. But there are other sections of the uh, circuit where if you go offline to make an overtake, you're on wet ground and wet track, and you've got to be oh so careful. So you've really got to pick your spot, and that's going to make overtaking in the closing stage of this one really hard. And I think under braking is probably your best bet. Well, Gart Robinson is starting to lose contact with the front runner, Rafael Matos, and he's got to keep his eyes on the mirror because right there is Tony Buffamonte. And there, yeah, Ernie Francis Jr. right there with him too in the number 44. There he goes through your shot now. That 44 car last year was driven by oh. uh, Adam Andretti as we got to spin. Tom Sheehan. Yeah, uh, Tom Sheehan. Looks like he'll be able to get it, get it rolling. No, that's not the way, but he's got it. Yeah, they've spent a lot of time on the rear end of that car, and he's just dinged it again, but this time on the right-hand side. So it's been a tough weekend for the New England folk and his team putting that car together. But they've, uh, well, he looks as though he's got it going again, but Tom Sheehan not having the most auspicious than Gar Robinson getting sideways there for a moment as he really puts the hammer down now, trying to hold off Tony Buffamonte. Buffamonte, though, trying to stay with Rafa Matos, and I think that's what's... Uh, giving him the hurry up, but Rafa is pulling away here. Rafa's last lap, a 137.1, so he is definitely, definitely, we've got some, we've got cameras all over his car, so we should know, we'll, we'll know exactly just how fast he's going, but uh, Rafa really pushing on now. Hasn't put a wheel wrong Not yet. the entire weekend, Rafa Matos. Yeah, I think that's really, What's impressed me is that he drives so aggressively. It's great to watch him in any practice session, but he's always seemingly in control. I've not seen him make any real errors, and I think that's his single-seater experience coming through. Uh, these are quite different cars to drive. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely some of his IndyCar coming out. I mean, those guys are very, very methodical, very, Precision. very precise on where they put the car. Um, you know, whereas you got some guys that come from stock cars. You know we like to lean on each other and that's you know I think this course is really playing into Rafa's hand this weekend. Yeah no question about it I was asking uh, Robinson about uh, how they judge the corners and the breaking points because obviously it's set up for Indy so that when you see a hundred meters or a you know a 50 50 meter mark it doesn't really tell you uh, anything for Trans Am and he said you know they literally go by the bumps you know, uh, you, you've got, it's hard to get any peripheral view of, of what you're looking at in front of you because it's all a tunnel. It's all one big tunnel and uh, very hard to learn, I'm sure. Looks like damage to the 12 car. Yeah, he was way, way slow there for yeah. a second, but he got back up to speed. 
Van Terry, that's we're looking at in the number 12. There he is. And chased by the number 14 Mustang of Perrin. And look, the 97 of Tom Sheehan, they had big damage. Yeah, I think he was in. actually black flag for yeah. damage. I, I don't think he realized how bad it was. It's too bad, too, because he was running in seventh place, had a good race going. Yeah, that was a big bounce back from yesterday. Although he did have damage yesterday, and he, he did a heck of a job getting back back up to eighth, I think, yeah. finishing eighth. So um, kind of disappointing for him this weekend. Well, he's pulled the pin, has Rafa Matos, and he's starting to build a 136.5 his last lap. Really impressive. And he is taking it to them for sure because it's hard to live with at the moment, the kind of pace he's on. Perfect conditions now, dry conditions. And they're putting down more and more rubber as the race goes on with 21 minutes to go. And Gar Robinson and Buffamonte losing ground a little bit, Ernie Francis Jr., but uh, staying with this group. There's Buck. Behind them is Napoleon there. It's a good run by Napoleon. He's up to fifth, uh, sixth place at the moment. And Joe Napoleon from Magnolia, Texas. Uh, had a terrible day yesterday, got in the wars on a couple of occasions, and they eventually had to clear his car away. He caused one of the cautions, but he's up there now. Shane Lewis, seventh. Project's still in good world. Keith Project's up to eighth position now, and that's much better having started this race all the way down in, what, 14th place uh, at one point. Yeah, he's doing a heck of a job. But looking at the, some of these lap times, you know, you know, you said Matos ran a 36, Gar ran a 38 last lap. So yeah. he's opening up a pretty big gap. This is uh, very much a masterclass here at Belle Isle. And you just get the feeling that Rafa, with knowing his old mates from India here and knowing the course and knowing the uh, prestigiousness and history of this event, wants to definitely get that trophy for a win here. And he's putting on a show. I'll tell you, it's the it's the interesting part of auto racing, and you're seeing it on back-to-back -back days here. Yesterday, it was Gar Robinson uh, chasing down Tony Buffamani. Those two were dominating the race and kind of ba sitting back there in third place for most of the race was Rafa Matos. Today, it is Rafa Matos who gets out front, and then uh, he has not been headed since, uh, I believe, he probably took the lead on maybe the third lap of the race. Yeah. I think they learned a lot yesterday, too, so um, that helps a lot. Yeah, and if you're tuning in just a few minutes ago, it looks like the conditions are perfect here. Well, I can tell you at about 10 o'clock this morning, the heavens opened quite literally here in Detroit. We had a huge storm come in. Not a lot of wind, to be fair, but a lot of water laid down on the track. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to say it cleared up in time. We were worried that it might just linger but it didn't. We obviously started in damp conditions, but not damp enough for uh, wet uh, tires. So we started on slicks, but we did do a precautionary start in single file, uh, a rolling start in single file, and uh, that allowed Matos to get ahead. And we take a look at Gar Robinson, the local man effectively, racing for the first time, but he's still got that uh, Texas flag on top, because of course he's based in San Antonio, and sponsored by the 74 Ranch Resort. Yeah, it looks like they're all kind of just fanning out right now. Yeah, I don't think anybody can hold a candle at the moment to Rafa. I mean, uh, like you say, a 35-9 compared to a 36-2 from Robertson, 36-9 uh, from Buffamonte. So they're struggling to try and stay with him. The gap between Buffamonte and Matos, some three seconds, almost five seconds at times. So Matos really taking it to them now with 18 minutes to go. And the key now as a racing driver, Jake, is to keep the concentration. This is where it really tells. You've had a long weekend, a lot to think about. But these last 18 minutes, this is where the concentration, and uh, he's got the fitness, we know that. He, he carts all the time to keep that fitness. We saw that he's got a lot of bicycles out there, so he's a fit man. But, uh, you know, it's concentration now, because it's easy to make a slow stake. We saw it in Indy, Graham Rahal yesterday. Uh, throwing it into the wall at a great position to win a race, possibly. But uh, that's how quickly it can end up here at Belle Isle. Right. Concentration is key. And, and I think Rafa is is in his groove. You know, yep. he's 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 setting his, hitting his marks and, and he's he's in it. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, it's once you break your, con your, your concentration for that split second and make a mistake. I mean, that can be pretty detrimental, and, and your mental strength is just as important as your physical strength, sometimes even more so. So 
Um, I think all of the top three guys are just, you know, in their groove right now. Um, and I think the only one that might be a little bit frustrated is Garth. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> this is his one-off race. Tom, do you see right? Do you see Rafa Rice Indy here? Um, I'd have to go back and look at my uh, <laughs> my notes to see which year uh, it would have been. But anyway, uh, early like 90s, I say, yeah. I uh, actually saw him running midnight first in 2007 uh, in the old Atlantic series. So yeah. uh, uh, was very very competitive there, and uh, it was later on that he was into the Indy cars. But unfortunately, he's one of them that. Uh, because there aren't that many rides out there. It didn't get a long try at the Indy cars. So he moves on and moves here into the sports cars. And he's made himself a home here, to be sure. And you can see, as these cars go around the racetrack, the rest of the year, these are regular streets that everybody drives on. And this is Michigan. You might have heard, Michigan has winter. <laughs> and it does, indeed, affect, the, affect oh. the, the cars, or the track, I should say. The streets make them quite rough. Yeah, no kidding. So another car in the pits. That's the number 99. Thomas Ellis. Yep, Thomas Ellis. And as you can see, the jacks are up and they're doing Looks some like work. Might have been a flat tire yeah. there. Could well have been. So his day is over, but it's certainly not over for this man, Rafa Matos. And like so many Brazilians, it doesn't matter what you give them. If it's got a steering wheel and four wheels, look at Elio, look at Nelson Piquet Jr. and look at Rafa Matos. They love driving in any form of car wherever they're given a chance and they just love racing. It's as simple as that. Growing up in Brazil, that's the key and they've got a heritage of it and a history of it. And especially Brazilians coming here to the United States and putting on a show and there's more coming. And the latest Mateus Least coming into the IndyCar series and that uh, just like straight out the box it's almost they create these same guys montoya's son coming through another south american kid coming up on his way and montoya of course still going strong so we've got some great south americans coming through yeah and you can see as ernie francis came over you know you were talking about that earlier that that bump there. whoa Ooh. that's not the way to be it's the wrong way around joe napoleon who was up there He's running in sixth place. And that's big damage. He's got ripped the side off that car. So Joe Napoleon, the, I think he has. He's clipped, clipped the inside the there. And uh, he's ripped the left-hand side off that turnkey 91 Industries car. So we got the yellow flag out here. It'll be the, well. Well, right one now. more chance now for Ernie and the boys, so to speak. Because Rafa will be, <laughs> he'll be banging the steering wheel now. Well, Rafa, going, uh, hey, Joe. Well, we're the. Uh, we thought that we were one yellow right there, and I would imagine. That's green at the moment. Yeah, well, here's a replay. Yeah, he, he was just got offline. Off. Yeah, and he, he got so oh ooh. big off. Yeah, looks like he started to lose it and yeah. just tapped the wall. Yep. So turns himself around and turns himself into trouble. Half the track in the middle of the f in the half the uh, side wall there in the middle of the track and the front of that car on the side of that car I should say ripped off. For Joe Napoleon, and the yellow is out as we anticipated. 14 minutes to go here in our Motor City Dash. Plenty of drama, as we'd expect from Trans Am, the three dimensional services group, putting on a show here in the Motor City Dash. In the world of mobility and performance racing, there are a few acronyms that stand out. In the world of manufacturing, only one stands out prototype, production, proven. The Three Dimensional Services Group. Experts at production intent prototypes and assemblies, bridge tooling, low volume production and development manufacturing. The Three Dimensional Services Group. Well, this is literally gonna be a white flag and a race situation because we're literally gonna have a sprint to the end here in our Motor City Dash 2018. Rafa Matos starts to wind himself up as the Corvette's lights go off. This is it, last chance hotel for Rafa to hold off the rest of this field who wants to pounce all over him. Out comes the Corvette. It's all up to the Brazilian now. Will it be Samba time or will Gar Robinson take it home for Texas? Here we go. Uh, Gar got a pretty good start on him. He's st st stuck right with him. Good restart by Bufamonte in third. 
Francis Jr. under pressure from Buff in fifth place. But Rafa holding him off at the moment. Good start from Ernie Francis Jr. He's reacted well. He's coming up on Buffamonte. Buffamonte! Jinks to the inside. He's going to have a go at Gar Robinson. He's side by side but can't quite do it. And he has to lift off. And somehow Gar Robinson survives. But boy, did he have to break late. He got sideways for a moment, but managed to gather it all. Meanwhile, Rafa Matos holding them all off and not in any of these fights at the moment, but trying to go as hard as he can through five, heading up for six of the long back straight for the last time. This is going to be oh, the best part of the race wide. course. Watch it. Buffamonte surely going to get alongside him as they go down the back straight. Buffamonte. And that is just what Ma Matos wants yeah, exactly. to see. You know, now he doesn't have to drive out of, that's the hardest thing, not to drive out of your mirror. Uh, but with, uh, ooh, Gar's locking it up. Yeah, Gar's in a lot of trouble in the restart. Oh, oh Buffamonte gets a touch. Was that Ernie Francis that had a touch, or was there a mechanical problem? But Buffamonte's still going, but he's lost a spot of 34. Francis has gone through, and he's up to third, and that's just what Francis Jr. wanted. Bucks up to fourth, and now Buffamonte fifth. Real disaster for Tony Buffamonte, who was looking so good for the weekend after yesterday. Rafa Matos, though, meanwhile, is headed for his third victory of the season. The number 88 has looked sublime and superb here around Belle Isle all weekend long. And as Tom Michaels put it, he's not put a foot wrong. Brilliantly done by Rafa Matos. The former indie man impresses brilliantly here in Trans Am, his new home. And possibly you are looking at the potential new champion in weeks to come. Indianapolis, just around the corner, another place where Matos will want to go well. But that was a superb performance under tough conditions. A hundred mile race with a lot of caution and a lot of times for others to challenge. Rafa would have loved to have got that lead of what, five seconds at one point to really dominate this race, but he wasn't because everybody else kept hitting the walls or making mistakes and causing cautions, which meant that everybody else had a chance to have a bite at him, but he held off, kept his head. Jake, that was a superb run by Rafa. Yeah, he showed a lot of great co uh, concentration those last few laps. And, and I think as soon as he saw Buffamonte and Gar going at it side by side, he just got right back in that zone. And I think, uh, you know, that's the hard, like I said, that's the hardest thing is to not drive out of your mirror. Great stuff by Rafa Matos. So Matos celebrates another brilliant victory as he extends his lead, heading towards the next round at Indianapolis. Quick check on the results then. Rafa Matos, Gar Robinson second, Ernie Francis Jr. with his first podium in TA2. Then Jordan Bupp, Tony Buffamonte fifth, and Shane Lewis rounds out the top six. Great stuff by Matos, and in terms of the championship, Matos has taken his points tally to 160. Buffamonte now second with 126 points. Shane Lewis is up there with 105. Keith Prochak with his fourth place moves up to fourth with 99 points, 10 ahead of Jordan Buff. And I think that champagne is tasting pretty sweet for Rafa Matos.